today I'm going to be attempting the coloring page challenge. That's where you take a basic children's coloring page and a famous work of art by someone who knew what they were doing and you kind of try to mush them together into one illustration. Let's see how it goes. This is the coloring page that I decided to go with. It's just from Disney's website. You can download it yourself if you want to color it. I'll have a link in the description. Um, it's of Rapunzel swinging in her hair. And uh, when I first saw it, the first painting that I thought of was the swing by, and I'm going to embarrass myself trying to say his name, Jean-Honoré Fragonard, uh, maybe? <laughs> Feel free to laugh at me, it's fine. I really don't know how to pronounce it. but. I thought of this painting of the dude looking up the girl's skirt that we studied in college, like, yeah. <laughs> so that is the one I decided to go with, and basically for the challenge I just had to sort of apply these colors to the coloring page, and I actually take it a step further later on, but the first thing I really kind of tried to do here was a background, and backgrounds are very very difficult for me, and something I kind of avoid because it scares me, because it's something I need to practice. <laughs> And the only way to get better at it is by doing it, so here I am attempting a background. What I basically did was first I just sort of color swatched and grabbed colors from the painting and blocked out the shapes of everything. Um, and this was basically just to make sure that the character, so Rapunzel, would still stand out and wouldn't blend in too much, so I'm really worrying about the shapes. I'm not copying exactly the painting, because obviously that painting is at a different angle and like the composition is different. So I'm really just trying to use elements of that painting and apply it to this one and still kind of trying to make my own composition in a way. I, I also kind of just copied it, but <laughs> I was trying to think of it in a way that like I wanted Rapunzel to have like the blue behind her and have her stand out from like the greens and things like that. But yeah, I think I learned a lot doing this. It was very, very interesting. <laughs> I definitely need to continue to practice to draw backgrounds because this is some. This is definitely one of my weaknesses. I kind of just gravitate towards drawing girls and like I really need to expand my artistic vocabulary and backgrounds is definitely something I want to improve upon. So this was definitely an interesting exercise. Um, <laughs> once I was happy with the overall sort of shape and blocked out colors of everything, I actually added a Gaussian blur to everything and then zoomed in on this bush and started detailing. And props to anyone who can spend three hours detailing a bush. I am not one of those people. <laughs> I, this entire process of drawing this bush, this like one bush with like these little blue roses, this, <laughs> this made me really contemplate and think about what is it that I love about art and I came to the conclusion that it's not drawing bushes. <laughs> I, I got a little bit bored, I'm not gonna lie. And I, I feel a little guilty saying that and I don't know why but I do because I, I really want to get better at all of these different techniques like backgrounds like I mentioned but I don't know there's just something holding me back and I, I really need to like break that barrier. Day wasn't that day, but I really, really tried. I spent a long time on this bush. <laughs> oh, I know I feel guilty because I told myself, oh, I'm just gonna take a break from the background, come back to it later after I do Rapunzel, and then I didn't, so yeah. Anyway, now we're working on Rapunzel, and I was looking back at um, like other people's attempts at this challenge um, back from 2009 when it was going around DeviantArt, and I noticed that they seem to recreate the coloring page in their own style. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how they did it because none of them did speed paints of this, but I decided to use the coloring page as sort of like that first sketch layer, and then I added another sketch layer on top of that. So I basically used the coloring page as a base and then created my own drawing on top of it. And it kind of looks like that's what everyone else did, so... I guess I feel fine about doing that. <laughs> One of the main reasons I decided to go for it and just add my own sketch layer was because with the swing, the painting I'm imitating, um, it's very flowy and like the skirt is like a very important part, I feel like, of that illustration of just like the motion. So I kind of wanted to imitate that in my own sketch. So I'm not sure if I <laughs> really accomplished it, but it's definitely a little bit more flowy than the coloring page was because the coloring page is based off the Tangled animated series, which is the animation's a little bit stiffer than like say the animated movie that came out, you know, that was in theaters. So I wanted to try and pull away from that a little bit and make it a little bit softer. So this is actually another sketch layer. So I had 
what I had the coloring page, then I had my first sketch layer, and now I'm adding another sketch layer because I just wasn't quite happy with that. But yeah, I'm trying to like get the that skirt is really where I was having a problem. And what I decided with that was that I'm like, oh well, I'll just make her skirt big and poofy, kind of like the painting, because we don't. It. I think people will be able to tell it's Rapunzel. I don't need to have her slim fitted skirt. I wanted to, to more, you know, capture the painting that I'm imitating. So I made her skirt super big and poofy. <laughs> and then this is the basically final version of that sketch layer. I just added some little basic shading to everything um, that I will then apply to the painted layer because I'm slowly learning how to do this digital painting thing. <laughs> it's definitely an experience and I'm enjoying the not knowing what I'm doing aspect of it. Um, a lot more than the not knowing what I'm doing aspect of doing backgrounds. So slowly taking baby steps here, <laughs> slowly improving. Um, but yeah, I, one thing that I definitely forgot to do here and it kind of drove me nuts. I wish I had thought about it earlier. was basically before I should have, what I do is I merge the sketch layer with the color layer of Rapunzel. That way when I'm doing the painting, I can just use the color picker, just grab any color and just paint over top and I don't have to worry about multiple layers. Um, but before I do that, I was supposed to like block in all the colors and I forgot to. So yeah, rookie mistake. <laughs> um, but I had merged the layers. I did have old layers because I keep old layers, but I really liked the way the painted face was turning out and I was like, I don't really want to lose that because I don't know if I'll be able to redo that as well as I did it this time. But I definitely think my favorite part about painting is just doing the face. Um, so I think I spent the most time on the face. What I'm learning is like the biggest difference between digital painting and like the way I used to do digital art with like line art and everything, which I still do, but like my <laughs> just the difference between those two different styles um, is that digital painting is just a whole lot of tweaking and maybe it's a longer process. I'm not entirely sure if it takes longer. It feels like it takes longer, but I think it's because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm like analyzing each little step, <laughs> but it's just a whole lot of tweaking and undo button and like trying to figure out what works well and what doesn't. And and yeah, that's probably definitely mostly just my inexperience and my learning process, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun and it's, it's just an enjoyable process. And I think I've said this before, but basically it like looks really, really bad before it looks good. And you have to kind of be okay with adding in those blocks of colors and having it look bad <laughs> and like slowly tweaking it, which has definitely been <laughs> difficult for me. <laughs> Another thing I'm doing is like constantly, not constantly, but occasionally I use like the color balance tool or other Photoshop little manipulating things to like adjust the colors to make sure nothing's getting too muddy because that's just something that I really hate about my traditional art is that it always ends up being muddy. So I'm like, well, in digital art, I have more control over this. <laughs> well, like easier control, I guess noobish controls, I don't know. Um, but I think I used that to the point where it became a flaw because I think everything ended up too saturated and too bright. So it's almost difficult to shade because with painting it's sometimes it's you want to be able to add highlights and like everything's already too blown out So I can't add highlights and like I'm not entirely sure how to darken it without it getting too Gross, so it's like it's a weird battle for me that I definitely need to look more into and experiment with in the future But you'll see it just like <laughs> the painting just keeps getting brighter and brighter And it's like so blown out by the end, but I tweak it at the end and I think it helped a bit But it's definitely definitely a crutch of mine that I need to um, you know <laughs> experiment with in the future what I really like about making like this video in particular is that I'm able to address like the problems that I'm having and like be able to <laughs> voice them to myself and I can maybe then work on them in the future. And then the other thing that's really, really cool is I've looked back at like old videos and I really suggest that all of you make some kind of documentation of and like keep your art because when you look back at it and you see the things you were struggling with and you see the things that you needed to work on, when you actually applied yourself and started working on those and like, you can see the difference in your art and like the improvements that you've made. And it's just it's so encouraging. And like, it really inspires me to keep going sometimes when things are a little bit rough is to like look back and like see like yeah maybe you're not improving as fast as you want to but look how far you've come and like <laughs> just keep going because it's 
yeah. I mean, a lot of the times you don't need that encouragement, but sometimes you do, so. And that's what I like about having, like, even the commentary in my videos. It's like hearing how I've struggled and like hearing the things that I want to work on and then looking back and be like, good job, you actually did it. Or, ooh, dang, I forgot I even wanted to work on that. <laughs> I've really let myself down on that one. <laughs> but I mean, it goes both ways. And that definitely like encompasses the fact that like art is definitely a journey and it's not really someplace we want to get to. It's more the journey of trying to improve ourselves and get better and going at our own pace and like doing what we love and you know, that whole shebang. <laughs> Oh, here I'm working on these hands. These are a bit of a struggle. I, I don't know if I've ever drawn hands in this specific angle before, but it was actually kind of interesting looking at the hands a different way than I normally would because, so I'm trying to do it as a digital painting and not as line art. So I don't have to draw every specific line. I just have to sort of create the illusion that their fingers are there and like use the painting. I think I did end up going back to my crutch of like line art, but it was kind of an interesting experiment, like <laughs> trying to create the hand without drawing every little detail of the hand. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. And then basically here I'm just sort of adding some little final things that I felt were necessary, like strands of hair or whatever. But I really reached a sort of a roadblock because I wasn't entirely sure what to do to improve the painting at this point. And maybe this will come with experience because I kind of had to just step away from it and be like, okay, like this is the best that I could do for now. Um, but I need to figure out like how to take it to the next level because I think there's a lot of detail that could be added, but I'm not entirely sure how to go about doing it. Yeah, but here is basically my finished uh, attempt at the coloring book challenge. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I would love to see if you attempt this as well. I'll have some links in the descriptions of some of my favorites that I've seen on like DeviantArt of this challenge if you wanna check those out. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening of the world. So bye. Oh, and thanks to AJ for emailing me and uh, suggesting that I color a coloring page, which reminded me of this challenge. Thank you, like <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you.